<coughs> Breakfast burritos are a national American treasure. Today I am excited to share with you the most efficient way to have the best breakfast burritos of your life ready every single morning. And the secret always lies in just a little bit of prep. Now let's go! All right, I am going for bacon as my meat of choice. You wanna do chorizo, you wanna do sausage. I just like bacon and plus, I have a master plan that ties this bacon and the fat it will produce into the whole recipe. And now what I'm gonna do here is cut this into pretty big squares or chunks or whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna drop it into a cold pan over here. Gosh, that looks good. Bacon is just the superior meat. It's got what I would call the chef's ratio of fat to meat, right? It's just perfect, like 50-50 even more fat. Now my heat here is just a touch over low. We'll get that bacon on and let the rendering begin. And all you need to do with this is just come over every few minutes and just toss it gently so it will render out evenly. By the end of the video, hopefully this is all gonna make perfect sense to you why I'm doing this. It all makes sense to me. All right, this has been rendering for about 10 minutes now. I just keep tossing it. Not tossing, right, but turning it. You toss a salad, you know. As you can see, there's a ton of fat coming out, right? That's what we want. But also we got a bit of the liquid coming out of the actual bacon itself. So I'm just gonna cook this for a few more minutes so some of that liquid evaporates. Okay, wow, that fit perfectly. So now we are just gonna strain out the fat. We're gonna take the fat out of the bacon and the bacon out of the fat, depending on which way you wanna look at it because your perspective changes everything. Now, let's let it drip out here for a minute. Yes, yes. Now this bacon is totally safe to eat but you wouldn't wanna eat it right now, would you? It's not crispy. The whole best part about bacon is the crispiness. Crispy fat. That's all I want in, out of life is crispy fat. Now store your bacon. I'll let this lose its heat and then I'll put a lid on it, stick it in the fridge. I'm gonna use it all up within about six days though. That is my plan for these breakfast burritos. Okay, now let's weigh out the ingredients for our tortillas. If you don't want to make tortillas, absolutely fine with me. I don't want anything to stop you from cooking. But I will say, these are going to be some absolutely incredible tortillas. No doubt, man, no doubt. And that is part of the reason why we rendered out the fat, because we are going to use this fat in combination with butter to make our tortillas. In my case, we're going to be using the butter steak butter. For those of you that have been with me for more than a week, two weeks, I recently cooked the steak entirely in butter and it was amazing. Amazing. And I've been using the leftover butter in a lot of recipes. I do not want you to feel excluded if you don't have butter from a butter steak. So if you don't want to use animal fat, just go straight butter and then everybody can eat it. But since I have this, the butter steak fat plus the bacon fat, come on. This flour tortilla recipe actually comes from my brother, Sean, who owns a Mexican restaurant in the UK. It's called Barrio Comida and it's located in Newcastle. Definitely go eat there if you're in Newcastle. If you know somebody who's from Newcastle, tell them to go eat at Barrio Comida. Comida. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, hope you will make these tortillas. You don't have to do it for this video, but just make them sometime. I'm going to put all the recipes in the description. Let's go. All right, we're gonna weigh out our dry ingredients first. And I would really encourage you to use grams when you're trying to recreate recipes like this, any kind of doughs, baking, pastry, whatever. But don't worry, I'm gonna convert everything for you if you're American and you don't know how to follow that system. Here it is right here for Americans, but that will always, always be in the description underneath the video. That's where I keep all my recipes. You guys need to just know that, they're always there. Starting with all-purpose flour here, going for 375 grams. Ounces is right there. We weigh out a little bit of sea salt. I'm just using the one and only mold in right here. And for some reason with this scale, when I'm doing low amounts, I have to pour it right on. Otherwise it's not really accurate. So we're just going for six grams straight into the flour. And finally, just a little touch of baking powder. Now, milk, 90 grams, which is a half a cup. And 115 grams of water, which is a half a cup again. Boom, boom, boom. Looks like milk's a little heavier than water. <laughs> Now, last but not least, our fat or butter. In my case, you know what I'm using. Again, just use butter, don't get confused by this. We're doing 80 grams total, so I'm doing 40 of my butter steak. Well, I went a little over, that's all right, 45. And then 40 of my bacon fat, right? To make 80 total. Excellent. <laughs> Look at Ollie. Ollie just had his bath. Ollie, say hi to YouTube. Say hello. Are you, are you happy it's over? <laughs> Who's very handsome? Who's a very handsome dog? Ollie, are you the most handsome golden doodle? Yes, you are, yes, you are. Okay, now I'm gonna add my milk to my water and, and our fat or butter or whatever you're using. Lard would be uh, really good, guys, lard. As my brother Sean told me, lard is preferred, actually. Give this a good mix. I'm also gonna mix my dry ingredients here and then add it to a bigger bowl. I should have just put it in that bowl in the first place, probably, I'm not. 
not for the extra dishes, but hey. Now I'm gonna microwave this in short bursts until it reaches around 104 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take a couple degrees will probably be all right, but don't get it too hot. Now I'm just gonna make a little well here in the center and we'll pour all of that in and then I'll just start mixing and pulling in that flour and we'll just bring this dough together. First in the bowl like this, then once it's roughly together like that, we can tip it out and then just finish bringing this together by hand like so. This smells so delicious already using the bacon fat, a combination of bacon fat, butter, and essentially beef fat from the butter steak. It smells so good. Oh my God. Roll up all those crumbs. God, shut up, Sergeant. He's always over there just raging, dude. <laughs> Now after about six, seven minutes of kneading, the dough is nice and smooth, almost has a little shine to it now. And now we can portion them out and then let them rest. It's really important you let them rest, otherwise they're not gonna roll out, they're gonna shrink back on you, which is really annoying. Now if you're going for a taco, 30 grams is about all you need. Literally just over one ounce. I'm going for burrito size, right? So I'm gonna go 2.2 ounces roughly or so, but I'll experiment with a few sizes here and I'll see what's right. I'll do some three as well. Last thing I'm gonna do is just shape it into a nice ball in my hand here and set that down. And then I'm also just gonna set them under a damp kitchen towel. I just put hot water on it, rang it out. I live in Colorado, super dry here. Don't want them to dry out. That's why I'm doing that. A little kindergarten, a little nap time for these little guys. And we'll see you in a bit. And then you flip back the towel, right? pop them down. Okay, now while these rest, do you guys know that all chefs are actually marsupials? We have our pouches right here. Works like a charm. I carry my young, I will carry my young when I have them in this very pouch. I chose Yukon Gold potatoes for this. You could use russets, you could use all kinds of potatoes. I just wanted to go for these, they looked good. And I'm gonna peel them. You don't have to do this if you don't want, I just feel like doing it. But obviously you don't need to do this. By the way, I also have a great video on what you can do with these potato peels. You'll make the most unbelievable snack. That link is in the corner right now if you wanna learn how to do it. <laughs> and trust me, they will not last long. Now with your potatoes here, I'm going for a nice cube size, not as big as like a dice, meaning like a dice, a throwing dice, but a little smaller, I'll show you here in a second. There we go, sideways, and we'll go just like that. Not, not too big, not too small, something like this, but it is not an exact science. The most important thing is you choose a size and stick to it so they cook evenly, right? Otherwise, some will be mush and some will be raw. So just make sure they are all the same size. And then just get them straight into a pot, even get them straight into cold water like that so there's no chance of them turning brown. And this is the way. Now here, I like to strain out that first bit of water. Super gummy god, I need to do the dishes. I always need to do the dishes. You guys know I do this YouTube channel alone, right? I don't, I don't have an editor, a filmmaker. I do everything. I do the dishes. I, I sweep the floor. Anybody know a good editor who lives in Austin? Let me know. All right, and then what I'll do is just rinse those out again and discard the water one more time. Then we'll just fill it up again, cold water, and we are ready to parboil. On the stove they go, a little pinch of salt, and we'll turn them on, medium high. And the trick here is to not overcook them, not undercook them. I will show you how to test them when the time is right. We'll just be looking to insert something small and sharp in and just get the slightest bit of resistance. We want them cooked, but holding their shape. Once this comes to the boil, should take roughly just around 10 minutes. Now, potatoes, like I said, just about 10 minutes. I'm gonna take a little thermometer here is all it is. And there we go, we're just getting a tiny bit of resistance, but they're cooked, right? But they're holding their shape. Now we gotta get them off, we gotta be fast, let's go! Ah! Because you have to understand that these things are gonna keep cooking, right? So you wanna pull them almost a little early so they don't overcook. And then, if you leave them stacked like this, what's gonna happen? They're gonna keep cooking, right? So just get the water out onto a sheet pan, right? So they're spread out, surface area increased. They're not steaming to death, all right? Perfect. Just make sure you're ready with your strainer in the sink like I had it. Have a sheet pan next to it and you'll be good. This thing is holding its shape as you can see, but if I just bite it, I'll be able to easily break into it with just a slight bit of resistance. That's parboiled. Now I'm gonna let these cool down 20 minutes or so here on the sheet pan. Then we'll put them in an airtight Tupperware container and we'll store them in the fridge. And I would use these up in about six days, which is what I plan for these breakfast burritos. And by parboiling these potatoes, they are gonna be extra crispy when we get onto the next step. And you're not peeling and cooking potatoes every morning. Boom, you're good for a week here almost. Okay, now my favorite breakfast burrito salsa 
To Matteo Salsa, To Matteo. Not Tom a tea, yo, like you're offering your friend Tom some tea, but like toe, like a big toe, To Matteo. Okay, by the way, anytime I go and I buy tomatillos at the supermarket, they are always totally full, meaning nobody is using these things and I don't know why. I wanna let you know something. These have zero spice, no spice. I don't know if people think they're spicy, but they're not. I love them and we're gonna make a bright green tomatillo and serrano salsa with a little bit of avocado in there to thicken it up. It's really, really great salsa. I've been making it for so long. And what I like to do with these, you just peel them. It's almost like a little gooseberry, right? Look at that, pop. They come with their own built-in protective husk, like a gooseberry, if you've ever seen a gooseberry. Speaking of gooseberries, I think it's time you do see one. Man, this is my childhood wrapped in a little present. See this? Look at this, right here. You see that? This is what dreams are made of. These are almost like tropical kind of tasting to me. They are... I ate these when I was a little tiny kid in the UK, in York, and so, they just have a really special place in my heart when I try them, I just smile. Gooseberries, if you ever see them, give them a shot. So once those are all peeled, I like to just cut them straight in half. And all we're gonna do with these is just cook them in slightly salted water. Very briefly, right? Just to soften them up a little bit. Now a little shallot, you could totally just use uh, white onion, like so. Uh, just gonna slice that in half and peel. And with these, we can just rough chop them a little bit like this. Right? Different chopping methods there if you were observant. And a little garlic here. These are small cloves, so if you look at the recipe in the description, they'll be less because these are all just tiny, but I just wanna use them up. So I just smash it with my knife like so. Get through them real quick. And you grab that little tippy top there and just wiggle it out. And then all I like to do is take off that little hard end there and get just a little bit woody, you know, this end right here, and that's it. Now I want this to be my mild salsa, so I'm just gonna take one serrano, maybe even a little less, and I'm just gonna slice that up, seeds and all, right? Membranes, whatever, whatever all the spice is. And I always like to just test a little piece and eat it. I wanna see how spicy the chili is, right? This one is so mild, so I'm gonna do a whole chili. If it was really spicy, I might do half. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've just been practicing a Steve-O impression. Yeah, dude. And like, I, I didn't even listen to him and I think it's pretty good. I mean, I can't hear it like you can, but yeah, dude. A little bit of salt, tomatillos in. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so yeah, dude. Literally just two minutes and we'll get them out of there. Just slightly softened. And if they had any kind of poison on them, I just boiled it off. Yeah, dude. Should've put them on something like this. All I'm gonna do now is let them cool down for about 10 minutes. All right, now blender. Go in with our tomatillos, our shallots, our onion, our garlic, our chilies, our salt. And we'll start by blending just that. Just 30 seconds or so. Now, lime juice. Wh whoops, <laughs> did that the wrong way. Going in and a whole bunch of cilantro, as well as avocado, and this helps it to stay a nice, perfect thickness. Now, blend again. Just another 15 seconds or so. Let's taste, oh my God. Wow, we nailed it. We nailed it first try. Let's go ahead and get that out. And I'm telling you that, for me, there's so many different salsas in the world, right? I just love this one. And in springtime, it's just fresh, it's nice. You know, if you wanna fire roast everything, obviously that's delicious too, but give this a shot because it is one of our favorites around this house. Now, if you're a beast of a cook and you wanna do some extra curcucular activity, <laughs> oh my God, I've been waiting to deliver that line for so long. God, I, I couldn't sleep last night because of that. This is a modified peri-peri salsa. We made some incredible peri-peri chicken here on this channel recently. I'll put a recipe for this in the description. And it was the same process of just smashing everything up with a mortar and pestle or the mocajete, except I added some fresh tomato. Instead of lemon, I did lime. And now instead of thyme, I'm just adding some cilantro, right? And that is a quick red salsa. That's my medium, that's my mild. And I'll tell you what, this stuff is insanely delicious too. Mm. Oh, Fresno chilies on that one. Okie dokie, let's roll out some dough. You can do a tiny bit of flour if need be. And we'll just start turning and pushing out from the center, like so. If they're slightly irregular, whatever, we just need them to roll up, right? And we wanna do these pretty thin. This way, hopefully, they'll puff up. 
And because we rested that dough, you see how it's really just holding its shape here. Nice breakfast burrito size. Very, very thin. I can almost see through it to the table. Now, medium high heat pan straight in. First side, 15 seconds. You see all those bubbles? Flip. After that first flip, 35, 40 seconds. And we should see it start to puff now, which is a really incredible sign if you're making tortillas. I am blessed to have my brother, uh, you know, bestow these recipes upon us. And now we flip back. Another 15, 20 seconds on this side and it's gonna be done. Looks really good, right? It is. I tested one, it was incredible. Yeah, dude. And we just get that out. And the great part about these is they, uh, I gotta let it cool down a little bit, but they're really pliable, right? Floppy, you can ball it all up like that and it'll just spring right back, which is a great sign for a tortilla as my brother has told me. Okay, now you've done that on Sunday with the kids. You've got all of this ready to go, right? Only thing I didn't talk about was the egg here. All I did was crack them and whip them up. I'm not gonna do that beforehand. I'm not that crazy, all right? We're not some Vegas hotel. We don't need to pre-whip eggs, but salsas are done. Your tortillas are done. Your potatoes are parboiled. Your bacon is rendered. All we need to do now is assemble. And the beautiful part about your potatoes here, boom, just put whatever you're gonna use into another bowl and you just put a little bit of oil whatever spice you want right I'm just gonna do a little bit of paprika paprika you want to do rosemary salt amazing homemade seasoning we make on the channel right there you want to do curry powder bam you get three different bowls spice them up right I just love a little pimenton a little smokiness in my breakfast burrito always sounds good there touch the salt if you want you could even get a little sergeant Cuba master reporting Now let's make this really simple. Bacon, it's already rendered, right? So you're not gonna get a ton of bacon fat coming off, just a little bit, which is exactly what we want. And you're cutting down the time it takes to crisp up by a ridiculous amount of time. That's the whole point of doing it. That, and we have the fat to make the tortillas. So however, however much bacon you want, go ahead, drop it. Bacon is coming together super quick. Just took about four minutes on the bacon. We'll just go ahead and remove that and just drain it off. Now same pan with the perfect amount of bacon grease, drop your potatoes. Just keeping the heat on medium high for these potatoes as well. And they smell incredible. So easy just to have those in your fridge, bam. Six, seven minutes in the pan, they'll be perfectly crisp, fluffy in the middle. There we go, just six minutes, perfect potatoes. Same deal, just get them out onto some paper towel. Now I'll do a really quick clean on this pan. And back in action. Unsalted butter, and we drop our eggs. We'll just do a really quick scramble, right? Butter, turn that heat down. Don't wanna cook these too fast. Now I might, I might like my eggs quite a bit less cooked than you like yours. Just a little salt, that's all you need. I just refuse to cook my eggs any more than that. That's awesome. That's even overcooked for my liking, but hey, I'm doing it for you guys, all right? Spread them out a little so they don't overcook too much. Boom, let's assemble. Here we go, tortilla, some potato. I don't like beans or anything in my breakfast burrito. I like it really simple, but you know, do you, do you. This is Fontina cheese, incredible melting cheese. This stuff melts so easily too, so you just put it on like that. Bacon down here, right? And of course our eggs right on top of that cheese. It'll help melt the cheese. Now we wrap the edges, right? And we fold like this and then straight over. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, there we go. Now the age old question, right? to crisp or not to crisp. Here, we crisp. And by crisp, I mean little medium heat pan with some oil, and then just drop your burrito. And we do the edge that's folded first, that way it's all sealed together. Just about 30 seconds and flip. And we'll just do all sides like this. You don't have to do this, but that, does that not look amazing, right? We're going winners only on this channel from here on, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. Doing this is also gonna ensure that that cheese is definitely melted. This is what dreams are made of, my friends. Straight in half, the perfect freaking breakfast burrito. Let me tell you something, <laughs> that is what is up. All right, my friends, there it is. The perfect breakfast burrito every single morning. Prep it on a Sunday, eat it all week. I did one with tomatillo, one with that peri-peri salsa. <laughs> oh my God. Ah! Mm, mm. <laughs> that is the best breakfast burrito I've ever eaten. And let me tell you something, it would not be the same without that tortilla. That really makes it, like, so freaking good. The salsas are perfect, the eggs are fluffy, the potatoes are fluffy, the bacon is crispy, the cheese is fontina, so it's amazing. Absolutely phenomenal, my friends. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out! 
Today I'm gonna to show you the most efficient and easy way to have the Breck Breck breakfast. Today, today, today I'm gonna to show you that. Today, today I'm excited to share with you. Today I'm, today I'm excited to share with you my method for having the best breakfast. Ugh, breakfast. Ah, oh, I can't. Ugh. T today I'm excited to share my method with you. Today. Uh,